of the most common pedagogical techniques in harmony training is to teach students how to write four-voice chorales in the style of J.S. Bach. The part-writing skills learned through this method applied to a large swath of music, including much of the classical canon. This video outlines some common textural principles to help you write idiomatically for choir and voice. A traditional chorale consists of four parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Given the limitations of the human voice, individual parts should not exceed the ranges shown here. There are certainly vocalists who can exceed these ranges, but the idea is to write for an amateur choir, not a group of soloists. The chorale tradition prioritizes a well-blended sound. Although we want each voice to have its own distinct shape, we also want it to participate in a larger mass of blended sound. In order to achieve this effect, the space between the soprano and the alto voices, and the alto and the tenor voices, respectively, should not exceed an octave. There are no restrictions between the bass and tenor, but the lower the bass voice, the more space required to avoid a muddy sound. Another way to achieve a blended sound is to focus primarily on stepwise motion, which doesn't draw attention to itself. It's also easier to sing. Leaps, especially those larger than a third, should be used sparingly and with care. Ultimately, the best way to test the effectiveness of a line is to sing it, both by itself and with the other parts. In order for each voice to maintain its independent shape within the blended mass of sound, we need to keep them spatially distinct. In other words, voices should stay in their own lanes and not cross one another. In this example, the alto and tenor cross. The boundaries listed to this point are essential for maintaining a blended sound with independent parts, but this doesn't mean chorales should be formulaic. Each individual voice of a chorale should be musically interesting some of the time. Much of the time, however, it's actually good for the lines to be boring. Think of it this way. If every voice tried to be interesting all of the time, nothing would stick out as being special. In general, individual lines, and sometimes pairs of lines, shine at different moments, like a torch being passed from one voice to another. Writing well for choir is to maintain a listener's interest without descending into chaos. We'll end this video with an example by J.S. Bach that fulfills this aesthetic goal.